uh, Iraq and not in Syria as they do not as they do not have the mandate of the Syrian government but they do have the mandate of the Iraqi government so we see a kind of a division as the United States and Canada as well as the Arab nations will be conducting airstrikes in both Iraq and Syria but the European nations and Australia they will be conducting airstrikes only uh, in Iraq and not in Syria until now the importance of the airstrikes is very big because we've seen over the last couple of weeks that these airstrikes made it possible as well for the Iraqi army and for the Kurdish forces to make advances on the Islamic State. So they have been able to regain a lot of lost territory again on the Islamic State here in Iraq. But now, this week, uh, the Islamic State in Syria has been able to, to gain control over Kobani, an, an area and on the border with Turkey, and that made sure that the Islamic makes it felt again stronger and therefore also in Iraq they have been able to make a lot of advances again for example, yesterday and today, they were making advances again uh, near Baghdad. For example, they have now control over a, an important military base near Baghdad that was important to supply the Iraqi forces with food, with, with uh, personnel, with, with, um, with uh, military aid in order to protect uh, 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 the Haditha, them, a very strategic point in Iraq. So now the Islamic State is controlling that and that's a very bad sign. Annabel van den Bergen, CCTV, Erbil. More cases of dengue fever is being reported in South China. That story right after a break. Stay with us. Make major investments in China. China in China's privacy. Why we are living for? That's a fundamental government. position on China is arrested for by leaders. Arrested. I think that's the first step. That would be hard. Political change and human rights. Strong. Don't you think the human rights are Ideas matter. Populist, big, exciting, an economic colossus, a political heavyweight. On his 65th anniversary, we look at the impact of the People's Republic of China on the world, in the region, and at home. Join us on CCTV News for National Day coverage. China Impact with a week of special stories. Welcome back. So far, more than 20,000 cases of dengue fever have been reported in South China's Guangdong province. So far, five people have died from the disease. Health authorities say the epidemic has reached 20 out of 21 major cities in Guangdong. The provincial capital, Guangzhou, is the worst hit with nearly 17,000 cases. Recent days have seen more than 1,000 new cases every day. Dengue is a mosquito-borne, potentially fatal disease usually occurring in tropical and subtropical regions. Guangdong was hit last year, but this year is seeing 20 times the number of dengue fever cases. Health officials in the U.S. say the condition of the first Ebola patient diagnosed in that country 
has become critical in a Dallas hospital. The hospital didn't provide any further details about Thomas Eric Duncan's health on Saturday. It has previously said Duncan was being kept in isolation and he's in, he was in serious but stable condition. Duncan traveled from disease ravaged Liberia to Dallas last month before he began showing symptoms of Ebola. Health officials say they are still monitoring about 50 people who may have had contact with Duncan. Among those are nine people who are believed to be at a higher risk. The deadly epidemic so far has killed some 3,400 people in West Africa. October the 5th marks the 20th anniversary of World Teachers Day. The day was designated to garner support for teachers and show appreciation for their contribution to all of our future. This year, UNESCO is calling for more investment in the number of teachers as well as teaching quality. Many countries suffer from a severe shortage of teachers. It says 4 million teachers are required to meet universal primary education by the end of next year. Sub-Saharan Africa has the largest need, which takes up over 60% of the total deficit. UNESCO warns that many teachers are hired without proper training, prompting a global learning crisis in acquiring quality education. The United Nations says that education is a fundamental human right and essential for the exercise of all other human rights. However, many have limited access to that right, particularly the world's more than 50 million displaced people. CCTV correspondent Natalie Carney met with one man teaching some of Jordan's Syrian refugees in a rather unconventional way. Noir Bulbul is not your traditional teacher. In fact, he's not a teacher at all. Noir is actually a famous Arabic soap opera star, but faced with the civil war back in his homeland of Syria, he felt compelled to do something for his country's children. Today our kids have been without school for three years. My mission is to put theatre, music, science in their heads. For me, I'm protecting my children, the children of Syria from extremism in one form or another. As an actor, he thought teaching the children theatre could be the greatest contribution and Shakespeare would provide the most valuable textbooks. These children from the Zatari refugee camp have limited access to proper education. The number of students is large. It exceeds 80 to 100 people, and the school needs some proper equipment. For example, there is sometimes no electricity in the school. We need desks, books, notebooks and pencils, need razors and pencil sharpeners. We need many items for the school. Most Syrian refugee children are behind a couple of years in school. Twelve-year-old Wiam hasn't been to school since arriving in Jordan two years ago. Then, Noir cast her as one of the lead actresses in a montage of Shakespearean classics. Before the play, we were only sitting around. We didn't have anything to do. Then they told us there's a play and rehearsals. The Kingdom of Jordan has struggled to facilitate proper education for the unexpected surge in its refugee population, which now reaches almost three million people, predominantly of Syrian and Palestinian origin. The people in Zatari lived the revolution 24 hours a day. Now he has another thing to think about. Such as not forgetting their lines, Wiam and the others prepare backstage for their debut performance at the historic Roman Amphitheater in Jordan's capital, Amman. Shakespeare's play Hamlet is a powerful tragedy about murder and revenge. And it's not difficult for these children of war to relate to the subject matter. However, now, through this play, these children are able to use those painful emotions to create an experience of a lifetime. Well, it may not be a traditional curriculum, some might say Noir is providing an education just as important. Natalie Carney for CCTV in Amman, Jordan. And that's our report for now. I'm Clint Deloach in Beijing. Thank you for watching. We'll have much more news at the top of the hour where we'll bring you the latest on the ongoing protests in Hong Kong, where now taxi drivers are demanding that the protesters return their streets so that the city can get back to normal. We'll also bring you more on the annual Muslim pilgrimage of the Hajj going on now in Mecca. We have our correspondents there and we'll bring you the latest. We'll see you more at the top of the hour.